For thousands of years, it was only a red point in the sky, a nameless denizen of the trackless night. When the Egyptians settled their civilization, it had become familiar enough to receive a name, Hadesher, the Red One. The Greeks associated it with bloodshed and the war god, Ares, and so also did the Romans, giving it the name of their god of war, Mars. Over the intervening centuries, interest in the red planet has increased more and more. It changed in people's eyes from a planet full of fears to a source of intrigue and fascination. It became known to be the only planet in the solar system on which there was a strong possibility of finding life, past or perhaps present. Astronomers like Galileo, Huygens and Kepler, who first calculated the distance between Earth and Mars, are just a few names that we have to remember. The second half of the 20th century saw a new era in Mars exploration. After a series of failures, the first spacecraft to make a flyby was the Soviet satellite Mars 1 in 1962. Since then, both the United States and the Soviet Union launched many different spacecraft to the Red Planet. In 1964, NASA's Mariner 4 was the first spacecraft to send 22 detailed pictures of Mars, while passing at about 10,000 kilometers above the planet's surface. The most important finding of the mission was that the atmospheric pressure was between 4 and 7 millibar, based on data from a radio occultation experiment. Three years later, contact with the probe was lost. In the following years, different Mars and Mariner missions were sent to the Red Planet, offering more and more accurate pictures and data on the Martian surface and atmosphere. The 1970s were the decade of the Viking space probes. Viking 1 and 2 were the first robotic spacecraft to land on Mars. The Vikings were sent on a mission in 1975 to determine whether life had ever existed in any primitive biological form on the Red Planet. Scientific evidence by then strongly suggested that Mars had once been a planet with flowing rivers and a denser atmosphere. Only by direct sampling of the soil and atmosphere could the scientific community formulate a reasonable explanation for its evolutionary past and present state. Is there water on Mars? This was always the main question scientists tried to answer. NASA thought it had answered the question. The majority of the experiments on Mars at that time indicated no biological activity. The one apparently positive result was later interpreted as a non-biological chemical reaction. During a quiet period in the space exploration of Mars, laboratory studies of the planet on Earth received an unexpected boost when it was found we already had rocks from Mars here. From the age of the various meteorites found, we know that water was around almost certainly 1.3 billion years ago. But still, uncertainty remains. The influence of the Earth's environment on these samples could have changed some parameters of the rocks. So the Martian adventure continued. In 1996, NASA sent out the Mars Pathfinder. The mission was primarily an engineering mission, demonstrating technologies and concepts for eventual use in future missions. But Pathfinder also delivered spectacular images around the landing site, and science instruments investigated the structure of the Martian atmosphere, weather, and geology. During the same year, European scientists were involved in the Russian Mars 96 mission. But due to a malfunction in the third stage of the rocket, the spacecraft re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and fell into the Pacific. Flying on ESA's Mars Express mission, most of the European instruments on board of Mars 96 have now a new chance to get to the Red Planet. In June 2003, Mars Express will set off on its six-month journey from the Baikonur launch pad in Kazakhstan on board a Soyuz frigate launcher. With an expected lifetime of at least two Earth years, almost equal to one Martian year, Mars Express is one of the most cost-effective ESA missions ever built, and it was developed in an incredibly short time. 
The spacecraft will also carry a lander called Beagle 2 that will head for the Martian surface, in addition to seven other instruments on board of the orbiter, all of which will make a contribution to solving the mystery of water and life on the Red Planet. One thing is for certain. Mars Express will not be the last European mission going to the Red Planet. In the way that science fiction often becomes reality, Mars is now a prime candidate for future manned exploration and even colonization.